Welcome. All right, so what I have here is x squared minus 2 divided by 9 plus y minus 1 squared divided by 4 equals 1. And what we want to do is be able to graph this ellipse, as well as identify the center, the vertices, co-vertices, and foci. So the first thing I want to do is identify my a squared, my b squared, and my c squared. And I'm going to do that by first looking at this and identifying the larger denominator, which is always going to be my a squared, which in this case you can see is 9. So I'll say a squared equals 9. Therefore, b squared is going to be the smaller, which is 4. And c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. So c squared is equal to um, 9 minus 4, which is equal to 5. OK, so now I found out my a, b, and c. And that's going to be very helpful for me to identify um, you know, how to find the vertices, the co-vertices, as well as the foci. The next thing I need to do is identify the center and also identify where is my major axis. Is it going to be horizontal or vertical? Now, remember in the standard form of the equation, you can see that my center is always going to be at hk. So in this case, where its center is hk, where in this case it's going to be x, I'm sorry, x minus h squared over a squared, which in this case is 9, plus y minus 1 squared over b squared, which in this case is 4, equals 1. That's k. So therefore, since you can see we have a negative 2 and a negative 1, it's, it's, remember, it's x opposite of h. So opposite of negative 2 is going to be 2. Opposite of negative 1 is going to be positive 1. So therefore, I can say my center is 2 comma 1. And the next thing is, now I look at, all right, so my a squared I said was under the x. Whenever my a is under the x, I know that my major axis is going to be horizontal. So I'm going to have a horizontal major axis. OK, so now to be able to graph as well as determine the information, I think it's most important to plot what I currently have. So I have a center at 2 comma 1. So I'm going to go over 2, up 1. All right. So that is going to be my center, and I'll label it appropriately. Now again, I'm going to have a major axis. So it's not really a part of your graph, but a lot of times I like to write in that dotted line. Because what's so important about this is, remember, the major, or the major axis holds the center, which we already see is on there, the foci, and the vertices. And why that's so important is, the distance from the center to the vertices is a. All right. Now, we notice if I want to find that distance, I'm going to be going left and right. The distance, the distance from the center to your foci is c. And again, I have to go along this major axis. So my vertices and my foci are all going to lie in this dotted red line, where my covertices is going to be perpendicular to that line. So again, let's figure out what a is. So. If a squared is 9, we can say a equals 3 as I take the square root of both sides. So if my center is at 2 comma 3, I just need to go 3 units to the right to find one vertice and 3 units to the left to find the other vertice. So I'll go 1, 2, 3. That's vertice 1. And then to the left, 1, 2, 3. That's vertice 2. So let's go ahead and write these down. So I have my vertices are now at uh, 5. 5 comma 1 and negative 1 comma 1. All right. And one thing that's very important is notice that the center, the vertices, as well as the foci are all going to have the same y coordinates because they all lie on that major axis. Uh, the next thing we need to do is identify my covertices. So the covertices um, is going to be a distance of b from there. But remember, the, if this is the major axis, then my minor axis is going to be perpendicular. So now I'm going to be going up and down for my covertices. So if b squared equals 4, I can say b equals 2. So take the square root of both sides. So I'm just going to go up 2. So I can say covertice is at 2 comma 3, as well as 2 comma, and just subtract negative 1. So that's covertice. That's my covertice. All right. Now lastly, what I need to do is be able to identify uh, what is my foci. So my foci is going to be distance of uh, um, the square root of 5. So if I know c squared equals 5, take the square root of both sides. c equals the square root of 5. So again, I need to go square root of 5 to the right and square root of 5 to the left. Now the square root of 5, I'm just going to approximate, is going to be anywhere between 4 
uh, I'm sorry, square root of 5 is anywhere we're going to be between 2 and 3. Um, so I'm just going to go over 1, 2, 3. So I'll just say here's one foci, 1, 2. There's the other foci. I'm just trying to approximate the best I can. Um, and now, so when writing to my foci, again, I'm going from the center. So I know that the y coordinate is always going to be the same. I don't need to worry about that. I know it's going to be 1. All right. And, but now I just went um, 2 plus the square root of 5 and 2 minus the square root of 5. Right? That's all I put in. I took 2 and I added square root of 5 and then I subtracted square root of 5. So those are going to be my two foci. I have my vertices, my covertices, and my center. Now I just connect the vertices with the covertices and I graph a very ugly ellipse, but that's going to be something. Uh, where it's going to look at. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph an ellipse as well as plot the information. Thanks.